So when I first saw the space, the garden was segmented largely by a pre-existing garage. It made the visual access to the main part of the garden challenging. The garden at the back was overgrown and we had some not great lawn to compensate for and that was the foundation for where we started. So when we're planning, we do really look to maximize the total space. The zones that have been created here, we have the dining, we have the transition, we have the vegetable garden, and then we have the pavilion space at the back. All of these areas become fully functional versus dead zones. I think the main part of the plan was about opening up the sight line to the balance of the garden. It's a lovely deep lot, but it just felt very compartmentalized. So one of our key features of this was forfeiting an actual enclosed garage for a carport. And we have the covered carport on the one side and then we have the pergola style dining space on the other side. With the covered part also allows for, if the weather becomes inclement, then the dining space to move into the protected area for weather or even for sun. One of my big motivators is creating that destination at the back of the property. If you can make that destination the hot spot, the place that beckons you to enjoy it. We've compensated for storage, which we lost when the garage was reconsidered. So we've developed this structure, which has two storage components on either side. In the center, we have a banquette style lounge space with upholstery and seating and storage again. And then we actually pulled the structure forward enough to allow for additional storage to happen behind and it really does create that destination. The owners had some plant material that we did salvage, but basically everything was pulled up. We set aside the pieces that were meant to be saved, and then we introduced structural bone pieces of the garden. And the only piece of plant material that we saved was an existing pear tree, which was planted in conjunction with other neighbors who also have similar trees that cross-pollinate. The gardener is an avid gardener, so the plant material we've chosen is much more diverse than you would find in most city gardens. It's not low maintenance. <laughs> it's an investment of time and heart for my client. The clients also have an invested interest in homegrown vegetables. They grow lettuces, tomatoes, herbs. There's really a wonderful collection. The wonderful thing about this garden is the season of bloom. It starts to bloom in May through until September. So there's always something wonderful in color and it really does create a dynamic effect in the garden. One of my clients has a European heritage and this was largely directed and encouraged towards that aesthetic. The pea gravel, the stone, it's all something you might find in Central or Eastern Europe. I think the interesting thing for me on this project was trying to harmonize the contemporary components which we pulled with the woodwork. So the fencing, the pergola, the pavilion at the back are all done in a sort of modern slatted cedar way. And then the more traditional European style garden elements are simplified or modernized by the lines that we've created. So they've all really landed nicely together.